What is up everybody, it is Life's Apprentice. Today we're going to be showing you guys how to um, install or replace your ridge vent. Um, if you were going to be doing this, say you didn't have ridge vent and you were adding it, there would be a couple extra steps, but uh, I'll go over that and cover that um, all in this video. So behind me we have like 35 feet total of ridge and ridge vent. Um, you can see, and we never do this either, we never run our ridge vent all the way to the end. You can do that, um, but we don't. So this got uh, lifted up by the wind. You can see here, this is all wind damaged. So we're going to be ripping this off um, and replacing it with new ridge vent. So stay tuned, I'm going to get this ripped off and then we'll get into the install. Something I just want to show you guys, and uh, it's kind of windy, so if there's wind noise, I apologize. But uh, this stuff was not installed properly. If you look, um, these are the size nails that there should be here, maybe even longer, and this is what they used. So this whole entire piece was held on by one, two, three nails on each side, and then they nailed the ridge with shorter nails which you can see right here doesn't hit wood um, so make sure you know what you're doing and you're using long enough nails to get into the wood um, there's plenty of wood here to nail to so there's no reason this stuff should be falling off like that all right we have everything off of the roof um, except for these which we're going to leave these um, they're fine you if you're doing new ridge um, and you don't have ridge on the house already um, usually I run about three feet and stop on each end um, and depending on if you're a ridge running into um, valleys or something that would be a, a different scenario but here we're going from rake to rake um, so we have three feet of ridge shingles on on each end and uh, we're gonna start installing our ridge vent now my absolute favorite ridge vent to use is uh, Owens Corning Venture Ridge Vent it works really well um, there's lots of kinds of ridge vent out there I'm not saying this one's better than any of the other ones or the other ones are bad um, but I like this the reasons I like it it's 5 8 inch low profile um, and you can install it with a nail gun now if you're not experienced you would not want to install this with a nail gun um, you would want to do it hand nailing but as a professional roofer being able to install ridge vent and ridge vent shingles with a nail gun is a huge time saver over the uh, the course of a year doing thousands of feet of uh, ridge so this is what we're going to be using um, now you can see this is 11 and a quarter inches wide and our ridge shingles are 12 inches so the ridge shingles will actually go um, a little bit hang over the edge I'll show you that but the first thing we want to do is we want to measure from the peak down um, five and a half inches that's going to get you your center um, if you really want to get technical it would be five and five eighths but we're going to measure down five and um, a half inches and then we're going to snap a line all the way across from that end to this end I just put a nail in there um, I went uh, five and a quarter so I'm gonna put my chalk line on here like this because I'm by myself so um, I don't have anybody to hold this end 
So I'm going to put the chalk line on there. It's at five and a quarter, but what I'm going to do when I put the ridge vent on is I'm just going to cover that line. For one, you can't see the line, and for two, it will cover these holes here. Um, so that's what we're going to do. And we're going to go to the other end and snap the line. I'll show you. All right, well, I got you guys on my head. Um, we have our line here. We want to make sure that our shingles, this reveal line here, um, is up far enough um, that we don't have the, um, we don't want this reveal area open with where the nails, where your nailing zone is. We don't want that open, so we want to make sure that our courses go up high enough. Um, in this case, they do. You can see that uh, we are right at, um, right at the perfect level right there so we're going to open this up and I have my nail gun uh, I use Bostitch it takes um, up to inch and three-quarter nails which is what we're going to be using these are an inch and three-quarter and you can see that um, they're about an inch and a half through um, the ridge vent and you'll be using these to nail on the ridge shingles as well so we're going to put these in our gun I'm gonna shoot one uh, pressure we can adjust, not the pressure, but the um, nail gun's gauge adjust is how, adjusts how far the nail goes in, which is really nice. You're going to have to have that um, if you're using a nail gun. The pressure has got to be perfect. So we're going to open this up, um, and this just comes in a 20-foot roll. If you guys are unsure about anything, um, you can read read the uh, instructions here. Now when you open this up and you get a little ways in, there's going to be these caps. Um, and these caps go in the end. So you're going to need one for each end and we're going to put this in just like this can you guys see just like that um, and then they recommend you put a little bit of sealant i'm using quad black put a little sealant in there that's going to prevent bugs and such from getting in there So that's that end. Now, I'm gonna flip this around. And we're gonna start nailing the ridge vent down. Now, when I do it, I always bend it like that. Definitely a little harder doing this by yourself. Um, and I'm gonna go two shingles over. So this is one, two. So I'm gonna go to here. I'm going to put a nail in. These ones are okay to overpressure, um, but you're going to want to watch out when you're putting the nails on. Now I just go through one side. So I make sure that we're centered. Um, again, I'm covering up my line. This stuff's really nice and easy to work with, um, even if you're by yourself. Okay, we'll put a nail here. And keep in mind, 
that you're still you still have your nails um, going through all these ridge pieces so getting a lot of nails in the vent itself is not necessary at the moment because you're going to be putting a lot more in And you're wanting to nail this, you can kind of see um, where this thicker part is. Um, I'm nailing the ridge vent down a little lower. And then when I do my ridge shingles, I'm gonna be nailing about an inch and a half up. So we have one side. Now we're just gonna go through the other side and do the same thing. And there you can see we have that part on. Now I have scrap left over. Um, this is from another job, so that's uh, where this comes into play. I'm gonna line that up. Well, it almost works out perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna have to cut around that. That's gonna be kind of weird, but. To cut this stuff, we just use a straight blade. Pretty rare you'll have to cut around something like this. Okay, then we're gonna come over here. We're going to go to about right here. We're gonna add our other cap. All right, now this is a three tab roof, so it's not an architectural or laminated shingle, um, like the newer shingles. So if you're doing architectural or laminated shingles, you're gonna wanna make sure that you buy the ridge that matches what you are putting on. So what, what I did, um, because there's not any ridge that truly matches this um, that I can get easily, is I have a bundle of three tab shingles. Now normally, if you're getting pre-made ridge in a bundle, there's gonna be a perforation line right here where you just break these and there's your ridge. Now with this, we have to cut these. And this is kind of old school. Old school roofers will know this. Um, this is your reveal. This is the side you're gonna see. This is the side you're not. You're gonna go from this tar line and you're just gonna cut angles. So we're just gonna cut these little triangles out like this and like this. And what that's gonna do is when you overlap these like this you're not going to see this part 
Um, if you try, you can cut them just straight like this, but if you get a little bit crooked, you're gonna you're gonna start to see that. So we're gonna go through. We need basically this whole bundle, and we're gonna cut all of these on angles like this and make our ridge. Now these, the only real difference between ridge shingles and three tab is gonna be the warranties and stuff like that. Um, manufacturers warranties are gonna want um, their ridge put on. Um, these are a 25 year or a 30 year shingle. So they're not gonna hold up as well um, as the ridge that's actually made for the architectural shingles. But for this, you know, this roof's probably 15 years old. Um, this is the best that we can do, I think, in this situation. Um, and it's gonna keep, uh, keep everything looking nice and keeping water out. So I'm gonna go through, cut all these, and I will show you how to install it. All right, well, I forgot to mention, um, and I said I would, how you would do this differently if you didn't have ridge vent. Um, so you're gonna want to read the instructions depending on the ridge vent that you choose. And you're gonna want to tear off your existing ridge, which every house is gonna have some sort of a ridge, um, I would hope. And what you're gonna to want to do is basically two inches, sometimes an inch and a half, sometimes two, um, on each side of the peak you're going to want to open up so you want to take a circular saw set your depth and then cut a roughly two inches on each side so you will have a four inch gap like you saw earlier before i put this on um, that, that was a good size cut um, on the ridge vent that's what you want it to look like and then you're going to go um, to the steps that i'm showing you now um, if you're hand nailing you're gonna do this essentially the same. You can see that these nails are over pressured a little bit. You do not want that um, with the ridge shingles themselves. So with the ridge, this stuff is really solid. Um, so you're not gonna get blow throughs through the ridge vent itself, but you, if you over pressure a nail like that through the ridge shingle into this, um, that shingle is gonna be compromised. So I'll show you that here in a second. But uh, I just wanna make sure that you guys understand um, if you're doing this most likely you should be hand nailing and make sure that you're using the right length of nails like i said this is five eighths these are um an inch and three quarter i believe they might even be inch and seven eighths but you're getting an inch and a quarter of deck penetration which is you know basically what you would want um, on a house like this which has um it looks like you know half inch or five eighths plywood um, you're getting all the way through that plywood and these nails are holding. So we have our ridge cut um, here, which you may or may not have to do. Um, and that's essentially what it looks like. Now these don't have to be necessarily pretty because this is your straight line that you're gonna see right here. So now we wanna think about um, where the wind is gonna predominantly come from, okay? That is um, west and that is east. So most likely, if we get heavy winds, it's gonna come from the west. So we're gonna to wanna to start on this side over here and work this way towards the west because these shingles, if you ran them the other way, that west wind is gonna get right underneath them and be more likely to peel these off. So we're gonna start on this side here and run that way. Well, for some reason, my thing wasn't recording what I wanted to show you is when you start, you're gonna take, um, you're gonna take a shingle and you're gonna cut it right here and leave the tar line on. And your first one, see this one here, um, you don't have a tar line, right? So this one's held on by this one, but this one, you don't have a tar line. Well, that's why we cut that and that's basically your starter. You can glue it too um, with tar or caulk but uh, this will work good. So you're gonna nail that. And uh, I'm gonna have to show you guys, I got a little ways down and realized I wasn't recording, um, but you didn't miss a whole lot. Um, basically, that's important um, to put a little starter on there or caulk this end down. And then I'll show you how we put these on and, uh, and we nail them. 
So like I said, we're using a nail gun um, and you don't have to do this. And I don't recommend without experience that you don't do this or that you do this. Um, so what you would do is you would hand nail. We're gonna go about an inch and a half up right near the tar line and we're gonna nail until that nail is flush um, with the shingle. Now with the nail gun, you'll see as I go that some of these are gonna be over pressured, um, some may be under pressured. Adding more nails in a situation like that or doing two nails like that um, will actually save you um, work in the future. So it, when in doubt, add more nails. And what we're gonna do is these overhang because um, this is 11 and a quarter and these are 12 inches wide um, so these overhang each side just a little bit and we're gonna nail it and you can see I'm nailing about an inch and a half inch and a quarter up it's not super super critical um, you don't want to be way up here and you don't want to be way down on the edge you want to be roughly about an inch or so from that edge and we're just gonna follow we know our ridge vent is straight so we're just gonna follow that with our ridge shingles. And we were talking um, about direction. Well, this, this ridge vent is going east to west. Um, most likely your heaviest wind is gonna come from the west in our area. So we're running, we're running these um, from east to west and that way a west wind is going to be coming this way and it's not going to get underneath these so it's going to be less likely to rip these off um, sometimes you don't have a choice sometimes you do um, when you have a choice just something that I'm thinking about see right there is a perfect example right next to each other an over pressured and an under pressured so I'm adding a second one just to make sure that it's secure, but uh, with the nail gun it can get a little tricky. And it's cold. Um, it's in, uh, it's about 40 degrees, so it's not terribly warm. You can see snow on the roof here. But this is a kind of an emergency repair. Uh, it blew off and there's snow getting under the ridge vent. So we want to make sure that it's covered. We're not doing this because we want to, we're doing it because it needs to be done. That's essentially the process. We're gonna finish that to the end and then I will show you how we end it. All right, now we're getting to the end and I'll show you how you're gonna to wanna to end this. We have a few more shingles here. And this really didn't take very long. And I'm by myself with filming and everything like that, carrying things up and down. Um, this only take me maybe an hour. Um, okay, so this next shingle is going to end almost perfectly here. So we're gonna nail this. And then we want this to overhang about an inch. I always overhang it just a little bit. Um, and that's what we're at right now. So we're gonna put on one more right here. I'm gonna cheat this one back just a little bit. Just gonna nail that. And then we're gonna cut this um, even with that other one. 
All right. Now I have this one that I saved from the other side that I used for my starter. This one's going to be my finishing piece. So I'm just going to take this, put it right over the top. Um, there's lots of ways you can do this. A lot of people do it different. Um, this is the way that I do it. It's not the prettiest way, but it's not going to come off. Um, so I just nail it. And I think this time it only needs two nails. You have that tar right there that it'll seal to to hold this end. Um, two nails is fine. And then this is where I'm saying it's not the prettiest. But every roof is going to have exposed nails at some point. Um, so I just cover that up like that. And like that. And you can even see there's nails behind me that I didn't do. Um, and they finished it the same way, but they didn't caulk it. We'll caulk those. If you're really, really, really concerned about how that looks, I never do this, but I'll show you. Take the granules out. And we'll just... Sprinkle them on there. There. It blends in better. Now there you can see there's a little bit of a dip right there. Um, but nice and straight. Um, nobody's going to say anything. The color match is pretty darn good. Um, I cut around that a little bit. That was pretty much pretty simple. Um, that's kind of rare that you'll run into um, boots and vents and stuff like that that close to the ridge. It's pretty rare. But uh, that's it for this one. Um, there'll be some links here at the end for other videos. I have a lot of roofing videos on YouTube. So if you guys are looking for more information, more how-to DIY videos, um, go check some of those out. Hit the thumbs up um, and subscribe if you can. And uh, I will see you on the next one.